This hack tip is brought to you by Carbonite. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down the concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Darren Kitchen, and today we're following up on our discussion a few weeks back about 802.11 standards with today's latest and greatest. That's right, it's 802.11n, or to be more correct, IEEE 802.11n Track 2009. Yeah, it's the latest generation wireless networking standard and then it incorporates so many vast improvements over the previous 802.11a and g standards. The most substantial of which is an increase from 54 megabits per second to a whopping theoretical maximum of 600 megabits per second. So to achieve this though, it uses uh, a technique known as MIMO which combines up to four channels using four separate antennas. And as opposed to the previous 802.11 protocols, N can actually use 40 megahertz wide channels in both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. Now, MIMO stands for multiple input and multiple output, and it's a technology that allows you know, multiple antennas to transmit and receive simultaneously. That's the really cool part. So the math gets a bit complex, but suffice it to say, an access point with two transmitters and two receivers isn't going to have the theoretical throughput as, say, one that has three and three. Now, MIMO also uses such technologies as pre-coding, spatial multiplexing, and diversity coding, which is a wonderful rat hole that leads into beam forming, which is super, super cool, but uh, and space-time coding, and I promise I won't take a left turn at Albuquerque here. Maybe we'll come back to that stuff later. But in short, MIMO rocks, and it's the reason why your Wi-Fi N gear has multiple antennas, and it's, you know, while its heritage goes all the way back to the 70s, it's a relatively new technology for wireless communications. I mean, the first commercial system wasn't developed until 2001, and then in 2005 and 2006, several companies started building MIMO OFDM devices. You remember OFDM from the last hack tip, right? Anyway, that's what's led to the Wi-Fi Alliance officially certifying devices based on a draft spec in 2007, until finally, after 11 drafts, the 802.11 standard was actually approved in 2009. And thankfully, you and I don't have to throw away all our old gear because it's backwards compatible with the previous standards, much like 802.11G was with 802.11B. Now, in just a bit, we're going to find out how 802.11N stacks up against the previous standards and this week's giveaway. But first, let's take a quick break. Computer disasters eventually happen to everyone. Your computer crashes, gets infected with the virus, you drop it, there's fire, theft, alien abduction, but if you get Carbonite Online Backup before your disaster, then no need to worry because your files will be backed up automatically and safely off-site. And it's really easy to get them back. Plus, you can get to them anytime, anywhere. Just access your files from a computer or on your smartphone or iPad with a free Carbonite app. With Carbonite, unlimited backups for your PC or Mac is just $59 a year. That's less than $5 a month. But when you use the offer code HAK5 to start your free 15-day trial, you get two months free if you decide to buy. All the details are over at Carbonite.com. And remember to use the coupon code HAK5 to get two months free with purchase. So how does 802.11n stack up against the previous standards? Well, between the use of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies, 20 and 40 megahertz of bandwidth, and data rates between 7.2 and, oh yeah, 150 megabits per second, I'd say it's quite the standard. I mean, the four MIMO streams alone make it incredibly sexy, and coupled with the same robust modulation technology as 802.11a, it's able to attain approximately twice the range of the previous lettered standards. And that's really interesting to see, you know, how 802.11 has grown since like 1997 with the legacy one, right? And N, the beautiful thing in here is it doesn't even end there, right? There's plenty more standards under development, like 802.11 AC, which would provide even higher throughput with up to eight MIMO spatial streams, 80 and 160 megahertz channels, and even better modulation techniques. So theoretical maximum on that one. 6.93 gigabits per second. Yeah, we'll see when that comes along. That'd be nice. Anyway, all right, so now it's time for the giveaway. Last week I asked what 802.11 standard enables high-powered Wi-Fi equipment to operate 
with license in the United States on the 3.6 gigahertz spectrum? And the answer is 802.11Y. I mean, I told you there's plenty of those standards to go around, right? Now the standard debuted in 2007 and allows Wi-Fi gear up to 20 watts. And it's mainly used for backhauls or last mile kind of broadband stuff, a lot of enterprise network stuff. Anyway, this week, what I'd like to know is what draft started as a study group of IEEE 802.11 in 2003 to define how wireless devices can create static or ad hoc mesh networks. Enter in the comments and be randomly selected to receive this here radio that I use here on Hack Tip. And as always, we value your feedback and suggestions. So if you've got a tip, share it with me. Email tips at hack5.org. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack 5. I'll be there reminding you to trust your techno lust. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down the concepts, tools, and techniques that go into some of those great Hollywood films. Now, dang it.